What's up YouTube? My name's Brandon and welcome to my shop. City commissioners have declared it a disaster area. A major disaster. Major disaster area. Major disaster area. Dealing with a mess you have to see to believe. Debris everywhere. It looks like a small landfill. The cleanup could take months and will cost tens of thousands of dollars. A mess. It's a mess. A warning. Some of the images here may be disturbing to some. So I know February is a little bit late in the year for most shop tour videos, but I saw everybody else doing it and started to feel left out, wanted to do one of my own. I tried tidying up the place a little bit. It's not exactly a, a clean curated YouTube studio. I wanted everybody to see what it looks like in my small shop. It is just a garage that I do my woodworking in and then a few months ago decided to try filming YouTube videos in as well. So it's not a pretty shop, a beautiful YouTube studio that uh, doesn't look like it ever gets worked in, but it is what I have, so there we are. I figured I would start out uh, doing one of these videos and then as I go through the year and make improvements and clean things and uh, make more organizational projects that you can follow along, we'll have another one of these at the end of the year and see if I actually manage to accomplish anything. So this is the south wall of the shop, uh, obviously where my miter station is. This miter station is the Norm Abram New Yankee Workshop design that I built I've been in here almost 11 years, so it's been about a decade ago that I built it. I've been considering taking it out and redoing it for more of a Jay Bates style station. Um, or as I've worked with it over the years, I, I don't really care much for this overhang. Uh, I don't like the drawers being inset so much. I like the uh, bank of drawers design that Jay has on his. This used to be level to here, but after watching a bunch of other designs on YouTube, I decided to cut that out and drop it down so that this bit was level across here and I can use the entire surface uh, to hold work. The miter saw itself is a rigid R4120 12 inch non-sliding. Uh, that's really my biggest gripe about it is that it doesn't slide and the, my width cutting capacity is a little bit limited, um, but it has Served me pretty well over the last decade. It has a 80 tooth Diablo crosscut blade on it that is in bad need of cleaning. I really want to replace this sometime in the near future with a sliding style. I haven't really decided what I want for that yet. Well, what I want is green and expensive. I haven't decided what I'm going to actually get for that yet. Over here on the left half of the station, I have a Porter cable uh, porta band saw that I put in a scrap wood uh, stand here when I thought I was going to get into knife making. Uh, so I do have a little metal cutting saw that I can use when I need to. And then here I have a whole bunch of junk that needs to go other places. Solid scrap walnut gripper jig. I don't ever use that either. This is the only band saw that I own. It's a little, I don't even know how many inch it is, nine, 10 inch capacity Ryobi band saw that uh, can't track to save its own life. I really want to get a bigger saw. My next power tool upgrade will probably be a larger band saw with a bigger resaw capacity. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I use my table saw to resaw lumber. When that gets up above about six inch resaw, it's you know really difficult. Some of the lumber I resaw, the blade won't even reach all the way to the middle, so then I'm stuck trying to finish it with a handsaw, and that's no fun. I've looked at the Rikon models. I have looked at the Laguna models. Uh, what I really want is the Powermatic. If you're gonna get one, go big or go home. I can't decide if I want to get a cheaper one so I can get it sooner or just save for a little while longer and get the Powermatic model that I really want. There's no telling how long it'll be before I do either. These junk catchers down here are all on full extension, 100 pound capacity drawer slides. This is the only drawer that has any semblance of organization to it. I stuck all of these little containers in here and uh, store some hardware in it. This drawer down here, half organized and half a mess. And then they just get messier and messier as they go down. Inker eye box jig that I've never used outside of 
testing it. Some nails. And then this drawer down here has some of my air conditioning tools. That's what I do as a day job as I'm an air conditioning contractor and a couple other various nail guns and stuff down in here because I don't have a good organized spot to keep them. And yes, I did miscut that drawer 10 years ago and uh, ended up with a gap there that I've never bothered fixing. Over here, I keep my pancake air compressor. The two horsepower, four gallon Craftsman uh, has been working since 2000 or 2001 is when I bought this thing, when I worked at Sears. This bottom drawer down here is just junk storage. Some old racing carburetors because everybody needs that in their shop. Over here, I just have some more junk. And then down here, I have saws, nail guns, etc. So over here, I have a whole bunch more junk on this flat junk retention surface. I have some magnetic shoes that don't really have anything to do with the shop tour. This cabinet is based on the cabinet that the Wood Whisperer made. The only difference in it is that I made it slightly larger. Hand planes in there the way I wanted to set them. And here I keep some saws, dovetail saws, some marking equipment. Uh, I really haven't gone through and set everything up in there because I didn't have enough stuff to really decide where I wanted everything to go. Then over on this side, I've got some hand planes, chisels, Stanley Sweetheart chisels here, marple, Irwin Marples chisels I keep around for beaters. Those are Wood River hand planes. That one's got a little surface rust on it. Victim of a humidity spike during a tropical storm we had here on the Gulf Coast of Houston. I designed this cabinet so that I could put a little secondary door in here on this inside that would be kind of thin that I could hinge out on some scissor hinges and store more things like chisels or um, a Veritas saws or something like that. But again, I just haven't got around to doing that yet. That's an old paintball gun. Don't even know why that's in here. Over here I have a 6x48 Craftsman belt sander that my grandfather gave me on a stand that he welded up. Back in this corner I have the Harbor Freight 2 horsepower dust collector with a completely full bag that I need to clean out. I'm planning on doing the mod with the Super Dust Deputy because this hose this is a Rockler Dust Right hose clogs pretty badly with planar chips and I want to hook up dust collection in my jointer but the chips that that thing puts out are going to get clogged in this little impeller screen down here really fast so I'm not going to be able to do that until I get a cyclone. And this is an antique hewing axe that my grandfather also gave me. I need to make some displays for all of the cool old tools he's given me over the years. So this is the east wall of the house. This is where I shoved everything over here to get it out of the way so that I could film this video. Washer, dryer, water heater over there. So this side is really just not very useful uh, other than for some storage. Here I have the Drew Fisher flip top cart with an old Craftsman oscillating spindle sander on it that was also given to me by my grandfather. And on the bottom side, I have a little Harbor Freight uh, one inch belt sander and my grinder. One of the modifications I made to this cart when I built it was I took a 25 foot extension cord and ran it all the way in to the power strip inside instead of just running the power strip cable out here so that I've always got cable on this that I can run over to a plug without having to hunt down an extension cord. This little gym right here is a late 2000s model radio flyer tricycle. Uh, I'll let my daughter park it in the garage so it doesn't get hail damage out in the driveway. Warning, if you're offended by green German tools, please close your eyes, plug your ears, count to 34, and then resume the video. Hopefully I remembered to give enough warning for everyone who would be offended by this to uh, click off the video. But this is my Festool stack. I have the CT36 extractor, and then I have a TS55 track saw, an OF1400 router. This one up top is the Rotex RO90. And this is just an empty sustainer that I plan on making a little portable carpentry toolkit, kind of like Mike Farrington did. If I can remember, I'll leave that video in a card up above. Don't the garbage guys know I'm trying to do a YouTube video here? I mean, come on. 
This is a six inch Craftsman jointer that I also got from my grandfather. For those interested, it is a 113.20680. If I'm reading the serial number correctly from what I've read on the internet, I think it was made about 1982. So it's almost as old as I am. Doesn't have a guard on it. I know that somebody's going to point that out. I need to make a guard to go on there, but it has been gone probably for decades. You know, I just don't have one. So I'm extra careful when I use the thing, but I know that not having one is definitely not the ideal situation. So I'm probably going to make something, you know, out of some unnecessary scrap walnut, of course, to put on there for that. This is my rigid, what is it? 4330. 13 inch thickness planer. It's a little underpowered. Really wish I had a helical cutter head, but it has definitely earned its keep over the last 10 years or so. This cart that it is sitting on is supposed to be the J Bates air filter cart. Basically built the entire outside of the cart, but didn't ever put the air filter internals in it. Despite being a air conditioning contractor, I just haven't come across a blower to put in there yet. So this is the New Yankee Workshop router table. Uh, obviously I never finished putting the drawers in there again. I built this probably 10 years ago. Fit and finish is you know, not of the quality that I could put out today, but I've had a whole lot more practice in the last 10 years. It has a Porter Cable three and a quarter horsepower router in it basically just like the one Norm used. Um, the only modifications that I've made to it is the dust collection. Norm's design had the pipe coming straight out the back. He didn't keep his on a wall, so space didn't really matter. I came out the side. I gave up the back portion of that bottom drawer space down there. And I came out the side with a four inch pipe and brought it out to here. And then I can hook up that Rockler dust right hose straight to that when I'm using it. I also teed off of there and brought up this uh, shop vac hose that I bought and attached it to the back of this fence and the dust collection on this thing when I bother to actually hook it up is really good. Up here on the wall is a drill and battery station that I built pretty much just like the one that Mark over at Wood Whisperer designed. He's got a set of free plans for this thing. Uh, the only difference is I think his was 10 inches deep and I made mine 12 inches deep so that I can leave longer bits in the drill that I use a lot like a pocket hole bit or leave a big spade bit sticking out of the drill and it still fits. Got batteries up here for my Makita stuff. This is a sheet metal nibbler. Here I've got chargers for my rigid batteries. Over here, I have my random orbit sander with some sawdust on top of it. And it is hung off of the side of this little sandpaper cabinet that I just kind of, I didn't really follow a plan, but I looked up a bunch of similar designs online and just kind of made it based on that. Probably hard to see behind all of the junk on this table. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. Up here is a quick a uh, clamp rack that I threw together to try to put all these in one place. Partially based it off of one that I saw Jay Bates made. I modified it to just kind of go on French cleat strips. And none of these are actually attached. I can pick them up and move them around wherever I need to. Got a bunch of these little F-style clamps I picked up at Harbor Freight. Some of these bar clamps, uh, which I don't recommend using because they terrible and I've got a few Bessie clamps here six in total some quick grips uh, my golf club caddy up here and then down here is my old six and whatever horsepower craftsman shop back that I'm planning on putting into my assembly table whenever I get back around to finishing that and it will be in there and sound deadened and then having a hose port on the outside of my cabinet that I can plug into anytime I'm using my sanders do you know how you can tell if somebody in the room is a pilot? Don't worry, we'll tell you for absolutely no reason. So now we come to my biggest shame in the workshop, the north wall. Yeah, so this workbench was a freebie that I picked up that my uncle was throwing out. Uh, so I rescued it from the trash man. The bottom is mostly just junk wood storage. 
the top is mostly just junk everything else storage. The only thing that I've actually tried to keep on here was this MIDI lathe. I have plans to make a uh, mobile MIDI lathe cart, you know, of which there are multiple videos on YouTube, but I have a couple of design ideas for uh, not only dust collection, but chip collection that I'm going to try to implement because this thing just makes a mess. <laughs> it just throws this stuff everywhere. Other than that, this thing is pretty much just a catch-all for everything else that I don't have any place else to put. So I'm going to build that lathe cart. I'm going to get rid of this table completely, throw out a bunch of this stuff, find storage solutions for the rest of it. And I want to have this so that I can just put everything on rollers, my planer cart, my flip top cart, the lathe stand and everything can just kind of dock in and out along this wall. I can pull it out when I need it and use it and put it back and I don't have this. I don't know if any of you are familiar with a, another YouTuber named Alex Steele. Hello, welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here again today. When he was setting up his new shop, he was saying that he was at all costs avoiding any horizontal surfaces because he inevitably fills them up with clutter just like this table is. So everything that he could was going on individual stands made for that tool so that he just didn't have a whole lot of table surface to get dirty. And that's kind of the way I'm trying to go with setting this shop up going forward because any spot that I have that I can lay something down on, I will lay something down on. Speaking of Alex Steele, and I'll link it up here somewhere. He did a video a while back uh, doing a Damascus straight razor. At that time he was experimenting with streaming some of his work on Twitch. He would just set up a camera and just live stream while he was working in the workshop, chat with people, and he was doing the prep for the acid etch and on the acid etch he would take uh, some clear fingernail polish and put it along the cutting edge of the blade to protect it from the acid and then he would dip it in there and he was having a very hard time uh, painting that stuff on the edge and keeping it neat. So I said in the Twitch chat, why not just put some fingernail polish down on a board or something and then dip the edge of it in there. And he's like, bloody heck, that's brilliant. Why didn't you tell me that years ago? So he tried it and it made it into the video. That was my idea, my 15 minutes of fame. Then over here is just my old mechanics tool chest. Uh, again, something I got while I worked at Sears. I don't ever close that top because if I close the top, then I can't open the drawers. So I just always leave it open and then it catches clutter. But it is what it is. Put it up here in the front so that if I'm working on my cars out here in the driveway, then I have easy access to my mechanics tools. More air conditioning supplies. Torch and giant jug of Freon. This little guy is awesome. California Air Tools compressor. I could turn this thing on, it could be running while I'm holding it, and I could still comfortably have this conversation with the camera. You'd certainly hear it, but it isn't very loud at all. This is the fancy light that I use to light my videos. It's a clamp-on work light from Home Depot with a LED flood lamp in here. And then as a... My daughter's staring at me through the door. Soft box, I put an old white t-shirt over it, and I just clamp it around and shine it at whatever I'm trying to... Really? Really? Right in the middle of my video? Hi. You wanna come over here and say hi to my camera? Yes. Okay. Hi. That's too bright. I don't know if the camera can see you. There we go. Hi. Tell everybody on YouTube hi. Hi. My name's Emily. The cutest little shop helper in the world. So then we come back around to the west wall of the shop, which is my garage door, where I have my table saw. This is a Craftsman Professional Hybrid Cabinet Saw uh, made by Steel City that I picked up from a cabinet maker who decided he didn't need two table saws anymore. For reference, it is a 152.221240. There you go, now you know has a Beesmeyer fence system on it and a completely flashed over tabletop again. I've got to find some kind of rust preventative measure that actually works here. You know, we're on the Gulf Coast of Houston. It is super humid. I can clean this thing up so that it's in perfect, perfect condition 
and then within a week it just flashes over with rust again needs to be done again i need to find something to make that permanent go hello i'm emily Marie hartman i my my daddy and my mommy and my puppies and my titties do you have any projects you want to make in the workshop no no do you like to help me sweep the shop yeah. You're a good sweeper. And you like to sand. I don't like to sand. You like to sand. You like to take sandpaper and sand projects with me. Don't you? You getting camera shy? Go over there. Go over there. Okay. Hello, everyone. It's Emily Marie Hartman. I like to sand and sweep in Daddy's office and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, kiddo. That's how my first videos went, too. Before we go, I wanted to give a shout out to my online buddy, Sean Smithson of Smithson Creations Handcrafted Woodworking on YouTube. He's only a couple of hundred subscribers away from that magic thousand number, so go over to his channel and check out some of his content. He has a whole lot more of it than I do. If you like it, give him a sub. Well, that pretty much wraps up this shop tour. Uh, if there's anything else you want to know more about, feel free to ask down in the comments below and I will try to answer that. Uh, like I said, it's not pretty. It's not an Instagram worthy shop yet, but I'm, you know, working working towards that slowly. But it's just kind of a look into my every man's garage shop. Uh, at least I don't have to share it with any cars. So until next time, until we meet again, peace.